you shit? <laughs> I literally fell over. What a great start to season four. <laughs> I nearly threw him through the fucking wall. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> we're back. Smooth. Season four. Smooth. Well, hey, those strictly moves are really, <laughs> really suited you well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was. Well, we're back. Yeah. That was just the entrance. Super for the <laughs> with Will and Ralph, <laughs> series four, and yeah. that is uh, that set the, set the tone for how well it's going to go. Yeah. That's um, as smooth as it's going to get. Oh. Well, uh, here we are. New venue, new location. New venue. Yeah. What happened to the pub? Well, we started. Went to a, from a pub. To a motorhome. Motorhome. And now we're in a cupboard. We're in a cupboard, yeah. I feel like I need me hand up a fucking gopher's <laughs> ass in here. A cupboard. I mean, I know, but that's a very specific reference. Oh, and yeah. if someone's not going to get oh, it... Oh, yeah, I'll just let me explain then, myself. Then, then, Listen. There's only one generation that's going to get that. Right, Everyone for all the like, generations, let me just say, for all the generations, there was a programme called The Broom Cupboard, and it was Philip's Gopher, and he had a God and the Gopher that was a puppet. And someone obviously had its had the yeah. hand up his eye. So I don't condone fisting gophers. I'm just really glad that we're 40 seconds in and we've already mentioned fisting gophers <laughs> and Philip Schofield, so that's great. Well, uh, we can still talk about people <laughs> and gophers. I, I mean, we should probably not right at the moment. Well, well, well you know. Hey, yeah. it was, it Tell was me relevant. about Harvey Weinstein, are you a fan? <laughs> no. So we're in a cupboard, and this yeah. is the absolute proof that we're in a cupboard, and I know this is going to annoy you. What do you mean? Why? What are you doing? What have you got? I've got... My tracksuit from the tour. Where have you got that from? Well, I didn't give my tracksuit away at the end of the tour, and you did. You just told me. I don't know where mine is, you bastard. I, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, honestly, I, I just said to our producer, where's my tracksuit? Because it's on the picture here behind us. Yeah. I love my tracksuit. I can't, uh, did I give it away? I must have, I must have been drunk. I would expect so. Do you, you remember the tour? Well, probably well, not. Well, yeah. yeah. I remember going on stage. I don't remember coming off. Look at this. Oh, I can't. It's glued to the wall. What is it? Well, I just wanted to look at some of the pictures from the tour. I mean, Memories. if anyone was listening to the, anyone who's watching or listening to this came to the tour, you'd know. But obviously, a lot of people listening wouldn't have done. It was mental. The tour was one thing that when we spoke about doing the tour, as soon as we said it and we put it out there, we shit ourselves. Well, I didn't really think anyone was going to come. I no, thought, obviously. Let's just start with a really like small series of venues and hope for the best. And then Pete, our producer, comes back and he's like, right, we've got this theatre, this, I mean, not quite arena, but we've got this like hall and whatever. And we're like, that seats 2,000 people. No one's going to come no, to that. No. And then we basically sold out. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was terrifying. As soon as we put it on sale and realised people were buying tickets, it was terrifying thinking no one's going to come. And it was even more terrifying when we realised it was sold out because we were like, what the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> well, do you remember, How are we going to entertain I land, people? I landed. I think we, I don't know if we should admit this to everyone, but basically I landed. I'd been away. I came back. We started the tour. Our first date was on like, I think the Wednesday. And we, we met on the Saturday to talk about the tour going, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after two hours we went, yeah, we'll get away with that. <laughs> and then did. <laughs> it was more, it, the thing was, it was... It was overwhelming, and I was looking back at. Th I was thinking about about it uh, before coming in today because you know we're back, and it was like, man, we did a tour, yeah, and it sold out. Yeah. I remember going to venues, and we was like in Shepherd's Bush, and our names were in lights, and yeah. we were like, it was insane. People are queuing to see us. Yeah. I know some one of them, my next door neighbour, he came with his son, and his son rightly said. Are all these people just here for, for Will and Ralph? And he went, yeah. Because <laughs> he was as shocked as we were. It I, was I mean, just... no, no one was as shocked as we were. Remember Manchester? It was absolutely rammed. And it we, was just crazy. We, we, we had to get escorted into the building. Yeah. It was the maddest thing. Yeah. I've walked into that building a million times. No one's had to escort me before. <laughs> I've done it since. No one gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was amazing. And thank you for everyone who yeah, came out. Amazing, um, amazing, amazing. Are we going to do another tour? We are going to do another tour, Will. I, I think feel like you know that, and you've just really sort of pretended. Well, that, well I'm thinking oh, we're going to sell some merchandise as well, uh, mate. We've only just started talking. Well, we listen, are, my mom I'm still wants this. a bungalow, you know. <laughs> I'm timing this. <laughs> we're three minutes forty-eight seconds in, and you're already trying to sell shit. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yes, we will be doing another tour. We'll yes. talk about it. Yes, I'm going to be selling more shit to go and buy. It's going to be just in time for Christmas. Uh, yes, perfect um, present. Um, we've got our, our two eight uh, two pints podcast dot com link. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, what have we got, Will? What 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 merchandise have we got? Let's have a t-shirts, t caps, pint glasses, stap cups. Look, we'll talk about the tour later in the episode. Yeah. But basically, um, if I if we don't if we start talking about it now, 
then uh, it's basically going to be 20 minutes of Will just trying to sell you shit. So hey, talk to me. Watch but, this space. I'll sell it to you later. I want to know all in. about Strictly. But before I do, a couple of points of order. Two pints with Will and Ralph. Yes. Got, uh, got our drinks. What we, what, what we have in beers? Well, first of all, I've just finished my cup of tea because it's 11 in the morning and I'm an old man now. I've got <laughs> a feeling in a few years' time it's going to be called two, two cups of tea and a packet of bourbons. <laughs> yeah, that's fine by me. Because we're getting on now, aren't we? So the bad news is, uh, do you think we have a beer sponsor yet? No, we don't have a beer no, sponsor No, we don't have yet. a beer sponsor. No, we don't. So. Shame on you out there. How so. can you not beer sponsor? How can you not sponsor a show called Two Pints of Will and Ralph? So here's this pre-prepared can. <laughs> What? Which has got black tape all around it because I'll be buggered if I'm going to advertise anything on Ralph. our podcast. Good. <laughs> For anybody you go. watching on YouTube, that's what you do when you don't get a sponsor. Yeah. You so gaffer it go. up to death. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh that's yeah. like one of those. What did you call it earlier? A BDSM video. SMNA. <laughs> what is it? What is it? What's, what is it? SMNA. What is it? ASMR. All oh, right. What's SMNA? It's a type of baby powder, isn't it? <laughs> or is it what you give babies instead of real milk? <laughs> yes. What's BDSM? I don't even know. What is that? I don't know. I don't know what BDSM is. Honestly, I don't. What yeah. is it? I feel like you might. I don't. Is it felching? <laughs> I don't know. Is it rude? <laughs> Why? Is that the first thing you <laughs> Because I, could you always <laughs> look at me with a glint, and it's usually really rude, and it's something you, you know about that I don't. You could have picked anything, and that's the first thing <laughs> well, you went to. Well, because I thought, what's gone, the rudest is thing? Is it porn? But no, you went straight to film. Docking, is it that? That's not... <laughs> stop saying words. Well, I don't know. Stop saying... You know more about this stuff than me. I don't know any... I don't even know what BDSM is. I've never even heard <laughs> well, of it. I don't... Is it bondage? I believe it might be. Well, there you go then, see? <laughs> right, well, right, cheers, anyway. Go. Cheers to Let's, you. I'll let me do this as a BDSM video. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if mine's picking up any sound. It's rubbish. I've clinked my glass on the mic twice, accidentally <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> well, um, to series four, to see my pal Ralph again after probably a year. It's got to be a year, yeah. Cheers, cheers my friend. Boom. And cheers to everybody, everybody out there who's you listening. Listen, everybody who came to the tour. If you're watching on YouTube, cheers to you. And uh, yeah. Hold on. What? You're not drinking all yours. What do you mean I'm not drinking? Uh, How's the head on that? <laughs> you shit out. <laughs> you tried to skim on the full I beer. Did not. I saw that. Man needs a flake. Witnesses. Yeah. All right. Cheers, son. Cheers, mate. No, I've never poured a beer before. Right, okay. Okay. Oh, here we go, we're in. <laughs> well, the series four, series four begins. Um, I want to know about Strictly. Uh, <coughs> um, well, how are you? I b believe that you got in great shape during Strictly. I mean, how are you feeling? Are you with getting older and everything? I played football last night, tweaked my Achilles after the first 10 minutes, and yeah. you know, age is catching up with you. Age is a bitch. Strictly. Um, wow. You're looking well, though. Yeah, f no, I feel all right. Um, Turn around, let's just see the back of your head. No, it's all right, I've sprayed it. It's not a, listen, don't be a dickhead, what are you doing? I found this in Will's case that he brought today. <laughs> it's main hair thickening spray and root concealer. <laughs> You're a dickhead. Why? Do you know what? I put that in my case thinking, you'll never see it. And he went, can I borrow some hair gel? Don't, don't you spray it. Don't. Don't. don't, don't I want to get all over you. I want to spray the back of you. You don't napper. need to. I did it this morning. Let's because I knew I was going to come and see you. And I thought the first thing you'll do is go, you're going thin. Let's have a go. No, oh, bollocks. Oh, you'll see it's already there. Don't go too close because you. Does it come off? Yeah, it does a bit. Look. Oh! <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I have to be careful in rain. <laughs> just a bit. It's just a bit. It's just thickening. Piss <laughs> off. Here we go. <laughs> you can't. You've got to do it evenly. Otherwise, you'll just. Look, pfft, it stinks. Put it away. <laughs> There we go. Put to breathe it in. Hey, there's a podcast sponsor, Maine for aging balding men. Hey, don't you? Hey, don't knock it. I'll get that for free now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I go through bottles of that. I'll go through loads of it. Um, yeah, the Maine. Maine I can't believe it's come off on me. Of course it does. It's, it's, it's a hair thickening thing, and that's that is what's happening. There's it's, a lot going on, and you mentioned strictly, but one thing I can't stop is the aging process. Everything's aging. My eyes are so much worse. Me, my bald spot, my penalty spot's definitely getting bigger. Um, I'm getting that sorted at some point. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a hair, my hair thing done. What transplant? No, I don't know what it's called. Transplant. It's um, British Hair Clinic are doing it. There's the mention. So I get that for free. <laughs> <laughs> British Hair Clinic. <laughs> You'll see me on the pictures with that look before and after like that. <laughs> um, and I think that what they do is they take it out the back of your napper and then they, they sort of. 
put it into the, the bits that need it, and then you, it grows naturally. So it's not like they're putting dolls there and everything like that. Um, so, yeah. Listen, I think if you're worried about it and you want to get it done, get it done. Who gives you shit? Yeah, I mean, fair. better than having to spray it every couple of days, isn't it? <laughs> and also, as well, what's bad about that spray is if you wash it, you have to do it every day. So then you do, I don't wash it every day. But then in the middle of the night, sometimes your head's itching like fuck. It does it not, do you not wake up and this is, the pillow is just black? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't do the washing, so fuck it. <laughs> And you know what? As well, I always feel bad when I get up in hotels. So if I'm in a hotel, you're like, I get up and there's my napper on the pillow. <laughs> Just see my black, my, where my head's been. And I always flip the pillow over. I don't know why. It's like I'm never going to see him again. Yeah. And it's, I think they're still going to find it. <laughs> but I always think they're going to come in and go, oh, look, who's been in here? Will Mello. Oh, he's got, he sprays his hair. I mean, it's, it's a headline but now. who cares? It's a headline now, mate. It's all right. I own it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my mince pies, I'm getting my eyes done because I am literally getting blinder by the day and it's getting to me now that even my glasses that I used to wear, used to go, getting for a fucking shootout, you know, them ones, mm -hmm. they're not strong enough anymore. I watch telly with them, but I have to wear my readers now, which were used to be too strong for telly. So that shows you how bad my eyes are going. So I'm having my eyes done at OCL, London. Mention. Well, there you go. That's be, that'll be sorted now. Um, and I'm getting. Hey, we can't even get a beer sponsor. How are you going to get surgery? I'm getting my eyes and my hair done. Balance of the beer. No, what it is is I went in to see him and I said, um, "Listen, I've heard about laser eye thing you can have done your eyes." And he looked at my vision and he said, "You can't have it done because I'm short sighted and long sighted. My I'm sort of very focals." So he said, "But I can do lens replacement, right? Oh. And that is where they literally take your lenses out and put new lenses in, and you see perfectly." But the problem is you've got to be awake and I've got to get this idea in my head. Oh man, I have to film it. That someone, well, you probably will if I get it for free. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> that sounds great. Someone will be filming it. Well, no, what I'm saying it's more about they've got to then cut your eye, take your lens out and put it in while you're awake. And it's just that, he said, don't worry, you won't see anything. I thought, I fucking will. I'll see that big knife coming towards me at some point. Well, he said, uh, not he said, but I once heard a story about someone who had to have an operation on their eye. What they had to do was remove it from the socket and like rest it on the cheek. No. But they had to be awake. So, so he was looking at his own ear hole. So he was looking into his <laughs> look hole. Can you imagine how disconcerting that is going, I wish I couldn't see this. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's horrible. It's horrifying, isn't it? Well, cheers, mate. Yeah, well, enjoy that. It's going to be great. Yeah, so I'm planning on having that done. Um, but no, strictly, um, oh, what can I tell you? Uh, it was an unbelievable experience. Yeah. It was everything more than I thought it would be. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done uh, as in, in a professional way, like as in a job. I know these people out there going, I'm in the army, fuck off, you're dancing. But it's not that. I'm saying in my industry, it was six days a week, seven hours a day training, not just the training, the dancing, but you had a camera in your face every day, asking you questions, going shooting VTs. It just took over your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I'd, I'd been asked to do it for years. And, you know, there was a few things going on in my life. And my head, my head was in a way that I just thought, why am I frightened of doing things? Yeah. Why am I... I'm always thinking about what will other people think if I do that? And, and I just thought, you know what? Next, they rang me. And I was on my way to do Celebrity Juice at the time. I was in the car on the way to do Juice. And my agent said, oh, they've come in again. Do you want to do Strictly? I went, say yeah. He went, what? I went, just say yeah. I'm just going to start saying really? yes to stuff. And I thought, yeah, I shit myself once I'd said that. But, <laughs> it, 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 but it was another thing as well. And this is the God's honest truth. It, my mum and my family have been through a lot. And my mum's on her own a lot now. And, and she loves Strictly. And I said, mum, I'll do it for you one day. She went, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And then when I told her, she was beside herself over the moon and so my family and we, and we went through it together and they had these vote will t-shirts you'd wear every Saturday give us something to look forward to and it was an amazing ride um, it was an emotional ride for me but I'm, you know what I'm like I'm, I'm always crying. oh you love a tear you, you, <laughs> no, love, you love a cry but it was it was an amazing what, was, em what was emotional about it just now, obviously, I, I'm asking that, but I was away. I was doing Death in Paradise yeah. at the time, so I didn't get to follow it as, as close. Obviously, I would have watched it all. So I only got to sort of see clips of like your dances and this and that. Yeah. And the other, so I didn't get to. You didn't watch follow none of it, you're lying. I, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> did I you did. Bollock, did you get, in the, get here? Shall I go to the beach? Or shall I watch Strictly on Maybe and really? I watched Strictly on the beach. Oh, Maybe I watched your. Uh, no, some, <laughs> actually, people kept on sending me your dances. Yeah. I was like. I'm trying to go to the beach. Can you leave me alone? <laughs> yeah, as no. if I want to watch that shit. So why was it emotional? Just, um, there was a few bits. Um, when I did my first dance, um, we'd been training for, because you have about two weeks, 10 days to your first dance. 
and the nerves are honestly uh, uh, that voice when they go dancing the jive is Will Miller and Nancy that's like a vocal laxative it, <laughs> honest to god at that point your ass falls out because you're thinking 10 million people are watching this live plus a studio audience of say five, 600 people and my family and my wife and my kids were in there and I'm the, my first dance I'm stood on my name Will in lights yeah and I've, my first ever dance on Strictly, and you just—it's like before you jump off that high board, you go and, and you're at the end, and there's a queue behind you, and you, you know you've got to jump. It's just—it's when someone goes now, um, and it was just building up, and I looked across, and my daughter was crying, and it was just like, Phew. why you hadn't even started? I know. I think she was yeah. terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but she, I think it was more like she was nervous for me. I mean, she's 15. You know what I mean? She's a teenage girl, and I'd asked them if, if it was all right with me doing it because I know what. Kids can be like at schools and, and at school, and they were like, "Yeah," and and it was it went amazingly well. And the adrenaline rush from when you complete it and it went well, yeah, I can't describe how good it felt. Yeah. Um, but then the problem with that was I started off and I was top of the leaderboard, and everyone went, "That's amazing." I went, "No," because there's only one way you can go from there, and I'm <laughs> down. Yeah. So they continued to knock me for the rest of it. But the emotional side of it, you know, it was my mum and my dad, and and when you're in that, that environment, you're in a bubble. And the emotion takes over you. And I did a dance dedicated to my dad and for people who'd, who'd, um, it was Remembrance Day. And it was um, a, a waltz and it was one of my dad's favourite songs. And all week I was training and I was kept on crying, all the emotions coming back. Um, and my mum, I knew my mum was watching, all that sort of thing. And when you do that, it just, you know, in that environment, it just took over me. And then I was trying to hold it back on telly. And you can see my lips gone, my chin's gone, everything's gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to talk, I'm going, you know, sound like if someone we can't talk about. Um, and then, um, don't sound, don't. no, <laughs> sounds like Bimmy Bavel. Oh, 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 yeah. Anyway, my voice. I don't even know Bimmy Bavel is. Go on. <laughs> but you know, my voice was going. Oh, oh. Anyway. So I did, I did it, um, yeah, and that's that's the reason. And when you're in it, you're carrying everyone with you. So every week you get messages, your family, and oh, I'm so proud of you. And you just want to do well for not just yourself and for your dance partner, more for your dance partner because they're professionals. But you, you just once you're in it, you think, right, I want to go as far as I can. And I got to the semi final, and I was proud of it. But it was an unbelievable ride. And Some glad I did it. Did you think you should have won? I, be I, honest, be I'll, honest, I'll be honest be with honest. you, I thought I deserved to get to the final because yeah. I'd never been in the bottom two. And when I got to the bottom two, the first time I was in the semi-final and I was against someone who'd been in the bottom two four times. So I thought, well, they've saved them for, they'll save me once and they never did. Mm. So, but that's, that's the game. It, it is a TV show at the end of the day. But I'll tell you what, I walked away with my head held high. I did give it the best I could. And I thought, if I give it everything I've got, wherever I go out, at least I can say I didn't scrimp, I didn't cut on the training. I tried it. I tried my mm. best. I'm not a dancer. My chips and peas held up, which was a bonus because <laughs> you know what? They're like a chocolate fire guard, my knees. <laughs> but uh, I was, honestly, if it, if it took my clothes off, I was like, I was like gaffered up. I had gaffer tape on my knees, on my shoulders, the, on my back. Uh, Kinney's uh, tape, whatever yeah. it's called. But yeah. answer to your question, unbelievable experience. One of the toughest things I've done. Have you still got, have you still got the moves? Uh, it's hard. To, some people said it. Do you keep dancing? It's like whenever am I going to go anywhere and go on your own? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when I go, when I, when I go here tonight to this family, do I'm going to boss out that Paso Doble as if I'm gonna I do just it. had a thought what? for our next tour. You've got to do some moves. But do you know what? I've got a couple of the outfits. I kept them. Don't think I'm putting on a dress. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in your in your eyes. You were like, well, I know the male part. Well, I've got my male bit, and you know we did a, we did a dirty dancing bit. I've got that outfit. All you got to be is baby. Can you do the lift? Can you carry a watermelon? I mean, I can try. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you are doing the dirty dancing lift Mate. on stage, on the tour. Can and you do the lift? We didn't Mate. do it in the show because we did a different song. So you don't even know how to do the lift and now you want to do the dirty dancing lift on stage well, with me in a dress after you've put me in a corner. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. And I think that could be the highlight of the show. Oh, Watch well, this space. We do have to top the biscuit wrap from, uh, from last tour. How amazing was that? All right, okay, I'm considering it. I'm actually considering. We've got to do something for the finale of the next tour. Well, I don't So know. it might have to be. I'm a bit strictly doubt, but uh, I have to say this one thing. Nancy, Nancy Shoot, my partner, was an absolute godsend. I adore the girl. Um, and she, an amazing woman. Oh, so, yeah. Curse of Strictly, was it? No, not like that. Very yeah. platonic, but <laughs> I, 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 I adored her. I wanted her to do well for her. She's an amazing person. Very strong. Been, been through a lot in life. And 
Yeah. So let me ask you a question. It's not a loaded but. question. It's not like a, oi, oi, you and Nancy or anything like that. But this curse of Strictly thing, mm. it sort of is a real thing. Like it's happened too many times I get it. now. I get I know, it. That's what I was about to say. It's like you're in such close proximity. It's very sexy dancing. It's very intimate. It's very physical. Can you see why like that's something that people slip into? 100%. Really? 100%. Because you, you, the, the, you're going through it together. You're training every day together and you're going through the highs and lows, the emotions together. When you get voted in, you're hugging and you're... And I totally get how the lines can be blurred. Really? 100%. I, I, I can because they're your world for that journey. And, you, and as long as you're in it, you know, it, I, I, I can totally see it. Was Michelle like that? Binoculars in the next <laughs> building, just keeping an eye. So I, 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 Michelle came to rehearsals a couple of times. I bet she did. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah. day, just sitting in the corner yeah. like that, staring. Yeah, when I had Nancy on my shoulder. <laughs> uh, but no, it was fine. Um, no, great. As I say, great experience. Uh, there's a question. Would you ever consider doing it? I don't think so. I said that. Well, you know. Never Age, it gets to you. You start say- thinking... What's life about? And I thought life now for me is grabbing everything I can out of it and saying yes to more things and not being, af- not being afraid to go, I'm doing it and I don't care what people think, you know what I mean? And do it for, y- for you and for the right reasons. And I think creating memories and grabbing life, when you lose people in life, when, you st- when people start, I won't say dying around you, but you know, I lost my dad and my sister and a couple of uncles and all that, I just, you just start realizing you're getting older you know, squeeze as much of life as you can out of it. That's oh. a, And that was a part of that. And yeah. I'm still doing it now. And that's my mindset going forward now in life. Well, you, while you can still see. While I can still see, <laughs> while I've got hair. <laughs> well, yeah. It's on its way, <laughs> How old are you now? 47. You're three years younger than me, aren't you? Four, uh, four, uh, 43, 44. In so would, would you consider ever doing Strictly? Oh. I mean, look, you just said it, right? It's like, never say never. Like right now, I'm like, I don't think so. I can't see it. But mm. that's what you used to say as well, so... It's, do you know what it is? Is, <clears throat> is? is whatever the reasons you, if you wanted to do it, don't let it be someone else's decision. Don't go, I'm not doing that because it, people might go, why is he doing that? You know, you always, I think always be true to yourself and don't let anybody else rule what you do. I think that's a pretty good philosophy for life in general, isn't it? Well, it is, but, you, but I, I, I'll be honest, I've not always been brave enough to do that and say that, but I think age does that to you. You start getting a little bit more, why do I give a shit about what they think when well, they don't even know me? You know what I mean? I've got my family. I know what I want to do. I look after them and, you know, go and make some memories. Look back and say I did it rather than I should have. Love it. On that note. Yes. On that extremely inspiring and uplifting well, there note. There you go. It's I've t- had half a pint. I'm t- getting t- you're <laughs> absolutely smashed. <laughs> on, on half a beer, I'm getting all emotional. You are, you're getting emotional. <laughs> but, oh, you know. Um, I want to, te- I want to for this series, I think we should, like, what? take a little section to just look at what's been going on on the internet okay. for a little roundup of stupid stuff. No, that's good. Love and all that stuff. So I found this, which I wondered if you'd like. What is that? It's called, can you see that from that distance? Yeah, you cheeky bastard. Well, I don't know, can I? What, the laptop? I? Yeah. I Go mean, this is a laptop, laptop, but can you see what's on the screen? Oh, is there something on it? Dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put my bins on. All right. Just because it's season four and it's the first time came for a fucking shootout. There you go. That's for everyone watching on YouTube. Them? I can see. So here we go. Have a look at this. A couple's tale. A couple's as tale as old as time. All right, okay. Babe, what do you think? Clean the kitchen. Hmm? Don't say you don't do anything. <laughs> so what's this? He's cleaned the kitchen, and he's like, "Look, I've cleaned the kitchen." <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, you did. Uh, yes. Yeah, I get you it. Clean the kitchen. Oh yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, what are you doing? Dear everyone in the entire world. You're emailing <laughs> everyone in the world? cleaned the kitchen today. Oh, so this calling? is men Mom, doing right. things in the house and then wanting to be appreciated for doing it. That's the, the joke, yeah. He's like, right. I clean the kitchen. She's like, ooh, you <laughs> clean the kitchen. I was wondering if this is familiar to you. I'm yes. so lucky. <laughs> I, I see, see that there. But it's just like men, jobs for men or when men do jobs around the house, right? Yeah. There's this... this thing that says well in the back in the day it was like women clean the house men go to work things have changed not like that anymore Mm -hmm. i go to work and i clean the house right (laughs) i I know and also they're taking out the bins that's a man's job isn't it taking out the bins well i mean anyone can do it anyone who takes out the bins tell me why we always run back to the house like someone's chasing us (laughs) i always (laughs) shit myself why i don't know i put the bin out and as i turn around i think someone's behind me (laughs) and i run 
<laughs> Mr. God, why you, is that? But you walk out with the bin. Walk back. out confident with the bin in the hand. Because if bin. someone comes near you, you can whack them with it. Well, my bin's usually full. So, you know, it's one of them. I, my, but, but when I get to, the, to turn around and walk, I never walk back. I try to, but I always do a jog and it turns into a sprint. What? what? I don't know, because it's probably late at night. Why are you so terrified? I don't know. Do you live in a dangerous area? The bin monsters. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But do you, I mean, it's, it's different. I mean, I'm, I'm married and that with kids. And so, yes, if I do something, I want to be appreciated for it. And but and, I'll, and and put it the other way, if my missus does something, I go and I say the house is clean for once. Yes. I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, hey, house looks great, love. Because if I don't, she'll have a go at me. So it's both ways. I, if I unload the dishwasher of my own volition without actually someone asking me to, I feel like, oh, I've earned a cup of tea, a snack. Can watch, can watch some telly now. I'm so happy with myself. Don't even get me started on changing the bed sheets. I am so bad at changing bed sheets. It looks like I'm getting into a fight with a sheet and losing. And at the end of it, the bed's all made and I look like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I'm like, why am I in this duvet cover? You've always resembled Casper a little <laughs> well, bit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but no, it's uh, it's 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 the age old thing. Um, yeah, I do like to be appreciated for things I do. Yeah, and also dishwasher, loading the dishwasher. If you have a glass of water, right, wash it, put it back in the cupboard. Yes. You don't have to put it in the dishwasher. No, I know. What a waste! What a waste of time! Oh, I can't. I can't and if you're going to load it, make sure the bowls are facing downwards, yes. don't upwards, so they fill water, and you got to wash them again anyway. Hold on, knives and cutlery. Uh, Face like down point, so, you don't, point, so I don't point stab myself. Point down, point down or point up. Exactly. Yeah, because I always go point down. Exactly. And the people go, oh, it cleans better if they're up. It's like I've never once opened my dishwasher and gone, well, those knives aren't clean because yeah, they're pointing yeah. downwards. And I'd rather. And I'm not going to get stabbed. I'd rather not slash my wrist trying to load the <laughs> dishwasher if that's all right. Right, here's another one. Let's have a look at this. What's this one? I don't know yet. <clears throat> Here we go. So I thought I'd share the time I shagged my boss. There it is. Why not? To set the scene, I was working at a builder's merchants at the weekends. I would have been 19, 20. And my boss definitely wasn't in his 20s. He was also in the higher end. <laughs> this is savage. What's going on How here? to phrase this? He was also I know in the higher end of the BMI apprentice? chart. Okay. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. <laughs> we ended up sleeping together on our Christmas party night. In the morning, while in the 69 position with me on top, he came. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. In the morning, while in the 69 position, me on top, he came. But as he did, he also farted. <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> Hang on. What? Oh, it's every night of boozing. What is is it? What is this person? Can I just clarify? Do I recognise her? Is she was she on the Apprentice? I think she's reading somebody else's story that's oh, come in. Oh, I thought she was talking about Alan Sugar. <laughs> I thought surely Alan's not let that go out. I saw her on the Apprentice. His lawyers are going to be right on it. No, apparently, I think she's reading that story. So, it wasn't a pleasant smell. Oh, I thought it was her. I thought it was her story. So she was telling someone else's story? I think so. I've got to find you this. You, well, I have to ask you, have you done that? What? Been in a 69, come and farted at the same time? Well, you don't have to be in that position, but... Well, done what then? What are you asking? Have you ever come, come and farted? <laughs> No, I have not. No. I feel like you have, though. I don't think I have. I feel like you have. That face you. is the face of a man <laughs> well, who, <laughs> who recognises... I'll tell you what I have done. Held in a fart. Oh, say. all the time. Are you joking? No, but then if you, if, if, if you time it right, you can let it go. <laughs> 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 you can you could sort of hit the rhythm with it. You can create your own ass beatbox. <laughs> Trying to time it with, with the headboard yeah. so she didn't, can't tell. Yeah, exactly. You've never done that when you've coughed and farted to try and... When you're at a parent's not, house. Not during sex. No, no. But I'm saying if you're at a parent's house or you've just met someone for the first time or whatever and you've got a fart, <coughs> you do one of them ones and fart and cough. It's a similar situation. Honestly, do, you but know what? do you know what? I, I mean, this, this is going to be a Daily Express headline because anything Death in Paradise related, they love. Go on. But this is the truth. So, my mum was asking me, she was like, so, how, you know, when, how do you spend your day? How, how do you get through the day? And she was sort of asking them more like what, what the mental process is like to go through a day of filming. Right. And I gave her like a reasonable answer from my mum, but I had the thought, and it's absolutely true, 
my like emotional and mental energy throughout the day of Death in Paradise, particularly once you get towards the afternoon and the last couple of hours of the afternoon, it's like, um, I'd say it's like 60% remembering my lines, 20% hitting my marks, and the final 20% is holding in my farts. Right. <laughs> because everybody on the, and I said this to a couple of crew members and they're like, oh yeah, I mean, oh, absolutely. It's like everybody on a film set for the last two hours of the job is just like, that was a big lunch. Yeah, I really don't, I don't want to upset everyone. Always. After, it's terrible, you, isn't it? When you're filming, not just that, when you're filming, never go to the loo street after lunch, it stinks. Oh, it? oh man. Everyone offloads. Everyone runs to the, yeah. Do you know what I was thinking about that as well, when you were saying you're holding your farts? The only place I really let go of my farts and think, I don't give a shit, is on planes. It's like, you'll never guess it's me. <laughs> Push it deep into that seat. Oh and I'll just God. go, Fuck, it stinks on this plane. Oh, oh, it's always me. Never be I on a plane I always think when Will you get Mellis. to the other end, and they open that door, it must just go off <laughs> of all the farts that have been trapped in that plane for the whole, how many hours? I'm amazed that the door doesn't blow off. Like, as soon as there's a crack, the pressure goes like they the come space on, stage. They come on with the high-vis, and it just changes colour with the shit <laughs> in the air. When we did our tour, one of the things that people... Um, one of the things that people really enjoyed was that we'd get our audience who were coming if they bought tickets, we'd ask them questions and ask them to give us uh, stories yeah. um, that we could then read out and people would admit to them if they wanted or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and we really, really loved that. And so we would like to bring it into the podcast. And obviously this is our first one of the new series. So we don't have any stories because didn't, we didn't get a chance to ask you guys for them. But if you've got any stories that you think we'd like to hear, but like any funny stories that you've got, we'd love to hear. We'd love to give you a shout and we'd love to read them. So yeah, um, yeah. So what you've got to do to send them in is that you click click the link in the text below, uh, below this podcast and you can upload a video, photo, voice note, or just type anything. Uh, so next week's episode, what we would really like is um, uh, Christmas stories. Best yes. and worst. Good and good stories as well. I had a lovely Christmas because I did this. I had a terrible Christmas because this happened. Yeah, best um, Christmas present, worst Christmas present, yeah, anything. And, uh, how about as a jumping off point, when Christmas dinner goes wrong? That's why we wake up. It usually start. does because yeah. you're usually pissed by the time you're eating your dinner. Mate, I've made, I usually make it for my family because I'm not a bad cook, but honestly... I, I'm so wiped by the time I finish because yeah. I'm absolutely battered. I can barely finish it. And everyone goes, should we play some games? And I fall asleep. <laughs> on the that's, that's Christmas for you, though, isn't it? There's no rules. Drink yeah. when you want. Sleep yeah. when you want. Yeah. So Christmas dinner stories, Christmas party stories, we would love to hear them all. So send them in. Send them in, yeah. Um, I want to know a bit more about you because I have not... We haven't spoken um, for probably a, nearly a year, maybe. I mean, I haven't seen you, but you're not good on the phone. No, I'm not. You don't answer the phone. I'm terrible. Even if, even if you text me, I'll ring you straight back. You don't answer. I know. But I know that's not just me. You just don't speak on I, phone. I, this isn't the answer to your question, as in what have I been up to? Like, but I, th I can't get my head around. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I think I've got a condition, like a weird psychological condition. Mm. I've always had, like, mum. In fact, that is a brilliant segue into what I want to tell you oh, go about on. my mum. All right, go on. Well, so I'm terrible at getting in touch with people. I, I've always been like this. And I'm, I'm almost sort of saying this by way of apology to like everyone who's ever known me, but like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a good communicator in, in a room or when I'm, when I'm in a room with someone, I'm like, it's, I'm like totally present, yeah. fully focused, but I'll be like, I'll be talking to say, say me and you were actually in a pub, not doing a podcast and yeah. somebody rang me, unless it was like really urgent. If it was saying say my mum rang me or whatever, I'd be like, oh, I'll call her back. Now, right. most normal people would go, excuse me, I am on you all right. Yeah. I've never been, I don't know what's wrong with me. Right. So, yes, I'm sorry that we haven't so spoken I don't take it personally because I speak like, to everyone else and they say, you don't answer my yeah, calls either. Same with Pete, it's the same with everyone. Yeah. And I've had it my whole life as people complaining at me or whatever. My mum in particular would like to hear from me a lot more, which brings me to, I've been waiting to tell you about this for ages, right? My mum in 2017, my mum had a stroke. I think we've talked about this before. And she actually recovered really really well because she, she actually had a stroke at the gym bless right, her right. Uh, she's 80 now so she would have been she's what, 80 like, now yeah, yeah. Hell. so she would have been what 75 at the time wow uh, 74 at the time um, and but she she, re she recovered really well she recovered physically really well uh, and her, her brain function mind like she, you, you wouldn't be able to tell is the point just very occasionally you can just see her reaching for a word but other than that right. like she's in great shape um She's also quite an eccentric uh, character, my mum. And like, in some ways, she's sort of quite, like quite um, 
like cut like savage like I don't mean banter wise, but she'll just be like to the point. <laughs> yeah, very blunt, right. very very blunt. But since she's had a stroke, she's much more mellow and she's chilled out. So if anybody wants any life advice from me, we got some lovely advice from you. It's like if you have parents who are slightly difficult to get on with, I recommend a stroke. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is my, yeah, go this on. is my mom who she's she's very eccentric and she's always annoyed that like she lives near my sister and she's always pestering my sister to spend time with my sister's like i see you every day stop trying to come over i'll see you later my mom's like well i'm bored okay right fine my mom sent me this on the 4th of october without any warning whatsoever we have a family group a family group text right and she sent me this personally she said i shall be sending a group text every day Updating you that I'm still alive. (laughs) (laughs) No preamble. That's what I got. This is Rowena's idea, and Ross thinks it makes sense. When I had my stroke in 2017, I was at the gym, and not alone at home. I didn't know I was ill until I woke up in hospital. I didn't ask for help at the gym, because I didn't know I was going to have a stroke. (laughs) Well, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) End of message. Next message. Continued. (laughs) She sent it by accident. (laughs) Continued. The message I shall send. Why is it so formal? The message I shall send will be a standard one saying, I'm still alive. (laughs) Oh, man. You won't need to answer it. It's just current information. If I miss a day, you need to contact your siblings. Hope this makes sense. Mum. Right? Wow. That was the group text. <laughs> I can't believe you're crying with laughter at your mum. Basically saying, you all don't call me enough, so I'm just going to let you know I'm alive every day. And you find it hilarious. Look at my phone. I'm still alive, mum. I'm still alive, You're mom. joking. I'm still alive, <laughs> days and days since the 4th of October. But we'll, She's doing it. Here, she's doing it, but here's the weirdest thing. She doesn't do it at the same time every day. So it's not like you go... Got my 10 a.m. text from months to say I'm still alive. alive. Sometimes she'll forget till 11 p.m. So You're the three of yourself. us are like, not heard from her today. Will, sometimes she misses days. You're <laughs> joking. <laughs> Just forget. So what do you do? Just ignore it. <laughs> what do you mean? The whole point is you don't ignore it. You call your siblings and say, check on mum. She'll be fine. <laughs> Look, That's not what look, she's trying to do, mate, Ralph. Look, this goes on and on. Look, I'm still alive, Mum. I'm still alive, Mum, every day. How, have you counted how many you've got? Well, every, well I was going to say every day since Wednesday, 4th of October, except not because she sometimes forgets. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to her phone breaking and her not knowing how to bother telling Ralph. me. Ralph. But also, think about this, right? <laughs> she's so funny. Think about this. <clears throat> we all know. I mean, as you know, with your dad, it was mm. just a horrible experience that we're all going to have to go through we all know that one day you're going to get that that awful text yeah right? and so one day i'm going to get that awful text about my mom but under normal circumstances i can live my life and when that horrible text comes then that i'll, I'll deal with it yeah however in this current setup <laughs> i have to get a text every day to assure me that the awful text isn't coming so instead of just thinking mate she could live till she's a <laughs> hundred that's 20 years of I'm still alive, mum. I'm still alive, mum. Forgetting days, <laughs> sending it at different times. <laughs> Why don't you have a chat with her and say, mum, I'll call you. Well, that's what she's asking for, I really. Every, mate, honestly, every new year, every single new year, my resolution is I've got to call my mum more. And every I thought year, you were going to say, every new year, I call that's when I call my mum. <laughs> <laughs> once uh, a year I call her once a year whether I need to or not <laughs> yeah, yeah and hopefully she don't answer <laughs> don't get on with me day I don't know I've never been a phone chatter no no I know it's, I, I, I don't I like, like talking and on the, the phone the thing is what's weird with me is I prefer talking to people on the phone I hate text oh really I'm do you know why because I'll go how are you text not bad how are you then I've got to send another text to reply to another text and also the context of what you're saying can come across wrong you can well, say oh thanks yeah. what you've done I really appreciate it yeah, that could sound like I'm being condescending yeah well text arguing is, oh. is, is the worst. See, I only do that with my missus when we've had a big row. And, and because I'm when I get angry, I'm not very good vocabulary-wise anyway, but when I get angry, I'm even worse. And I just tend to say horrible stuff. Just uh, because yeah. I cut to the point of, 
because I'm hurt, I gotta hurt you. Yeah, so I yeah. te- so I don't pick my words right. So I have to think about it and put it in a text. I, I, I think and I'm then ex- and then because I can't spell very well, things get spelt wrong, <laughs> and then it looks even worse. Yeah. So I have to then it's write. Like, words. I was trying to write count. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I get that though especially if, if you've had a bit a little, little bit of time sometimes i think putting something i've been known to like put stuff in an email just yeah. there's a certain formality to go in this is how i feel this is what this is written down you can read it back yeah. you can read it back rather than just dashing something off and sending it sometimes it <laughs> can be better but i do think in the heat of the moment arguing over text is is a very difficult one because if you're not not together because things get taken totally wrong yeah yeah and, and also once you send it they can keep it yeah and yeah, then they'll, yeah. they'll show it you they when everything's receipts. good again and everything's great you said this remember that time when you sent me this and they show it <laughs> you and they go yeah it was a bad day yeah, yeah. So, so everything's good with you though death in paradise all yeah, in the Caribbean I'll, I'll probably call my mum later so that's good um, well, you won't need to she'll text you in a minute yeah exactly well she hasn't texted me yet today so there you go who knows can you imagine, <laughs> oh if, I was the, can you imagine if I was the personality type to be like okay great so I'm expecting a text from her every day at 10am Imagine what the, the reason I'm sort of a bit I like. I should be at work. Has mum text yet? Can you check my phone? Yeah. While you're filming. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's lucky for me that I'm not that personality. If I was like a worrier about that kind of thing, imagine how much that would mess with your head. Well, if you actually called your mum, she wouldn't have to do that. That's I mean, the point. You you do make a fair point. You so do make a fair point. So yeah. No, go I'm on. good, mate. I'm good. Death in Paradise um, was you know long, what, right? Six yeah, six months out there. And, and are it, you still enjoying it? Oh yeah. I mean, I, listen, I loved it. I love it. It's it's an amazing job. But being being in the Caribbean because I've I've done one episode of it. I was there for ten days and I just got pissed. So it's different <laughs> yeah. for you playing you the lead do that part. For six months. No, because you've got all the dialogue. You yeah. got all that stuff. Um. And but being away in the Caribbean. I, I mean, I know I, you don't have kids and all that, but it's yeah. I mean, it's made for me really my my life logistical setup because no kids, no responsibility, all that kind of thing. I can just kind of go out there and be out there. Listen, I just love it. I love the job. Good. I love. Um. I, I was a fan of the show anyway. What's really nice is like guest actors come out, so you get to have like a new set of faces every couple That's of good, weeks yeah. and hang out and just like do different stuff. But yeah, uh, this this year was tiring. It was tiring. It, get, it gets slightly harder. Every, I think it gets hotter every year. I mean, I'm not measured, but like this year was hot, and uh, and we had two hurricanes. Pissy now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, are they bad uh, hurricanes? They're like, well, are they like, we only got like the edge of one and one passed over, but like. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Like, it's flooding and, and everything, and it's just like... It Does it ever become just a job? Like, there's the beach again, there's the sea again, there's the sunset again. When you go out there for a week or so, it's amazingly magical. But when you've been out there for six months, it's... it's it can do. Some regular old crackers. It's, just, <laughs> it's some regular old crackers. Um, it, it, it can do, but you have to keep reminding yourself. That, that's, that's on you, that is. It's like, you just like... Right, don't take this for granted. How lucky you are. Like, li- like I would pull out of my, my villa turn down the hill see the the sea and the, the you know the extraordinary view down yeah. there and every single morning i'd be like i, w- I don't want to get all kind of guruy here but no. like i read this thing about going like practice gratitude yeah so yeah. every single morning as i would drive in whether i was tired whether i was feeling full of energy whether i got up and had a workout whether i was hung over whatever and i'd just drive in and at the moment i saw that view i'd just be like you can be really grateful that you're here 100 and that, that was really important 100 percent yeah, so it was good, mate. It was good. And um, now I've just got to see uh, if there's any work <laughs> available. Well, I'm here, son. Uh, yeah. We can do we this. We got this. We got this. We can t- we come in here and talk yeah. shit and drink beer. And Strictly. Well, yeah, you've got Strictly yeah. to fall back on. <laughs> hey, Nick Pickard's in the jungle. Is he? Yeah. Oh, mate, is that going to be calm? I can't wait. It's made me year because it's like jungle, I'm getting, you know, Strictly... Uh, um, I'm a celebrity comes round and I think it's getting a bit longer the two if you've seen the trials you've seen the people they've got a good cast this year but I was thinking is it coming to an end it's made my year the fact that one somebody I know was in it yeah, and, we, and we both know Nick yeah. um, and Nick Picard it's not his cup of tea oh no he likes he's, his comfort he's, he's a very chilled sort of he's quite shy in his own way I mean when you get to know him he's not and he likes to drink but also way. blunt yeah, oh, but very blunt. Yeah, and I, I don't think he'll be able to put up with the shit. So, but well, Nigel Farage is in there as well. Ah, oh, fucking hell, that bores me. That shit. What's going on with politicians? Could be one of you know getting on these reality shows now. Do you know how much you got paid for it? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It, it just seems too. Say one point five million. That's, that's the real. That's yeah. absolute bullshit. I know what budgets the budgets they're offering. I know what I got paid for Strictly, and it's not going up. It's going down. <laughs> and and also for for a dickhead like Farage, I mean, they're obviously getting him on there to sell papers and to yeah. you know it's 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 that um 
It's like who did, he did it last time, didn't he? The health secretary. Oh yeah, of course. And and now he's on the he's yeah, on another one. He's on another one. The SAS thing. It's embarrassing. I just think, do your fucking job, it's man. It's embarrassing, isn't it? But it's and also, mind you, don't do your job, you dickhead. I don't, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm not well, a Farage better, fan. Yeah. Oh, fuck um, that, but uh, but you well, know it's what? Not, it's not a political podcast, but I could no, do it's five not. hours on Farage, so let's not. Yeah, dickhead. That's 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 that, it. That'll do it. That'll, that'll do, do it. it. Yeah. Uh, they should have that on the back of his shirt. Vote for dickhead. Here's the number. But Nick Picard being in it, yeah. So if you're watching it. He's a good friend of ours, and we're going to be supporting yeah, him. Uh, and also voting him to do trials, because it'll be hilarious. Oh, my God. we got ill. I hate it so much. we got to get him. Yeah, yeah. So, listen, we said we'd talk about the tour later. It is now later. Yes! We're going back on the road. Yes, we are! We had the best time last time. We really did. Do you remember me kept on um, uh, turning on your heated seats when you weren't watching? Fucking hell. <laughs> It was a pain in the ass. It was like it was like being on tour with your kid. It's like every time I get myself Ralph! comfortable, my seat it feel like you pissed yourself. Do you know your seat are getting? We had these amazing vans, though, didn't we? We got oh, really looked yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. Heron Grange, you was, yeah, wasn't it? The most amazing tour tour van. Yeah. And bless them, the lads were like. So they were like. Um, oh, this reminds me of a story I've got to tell you. These they, they, it was like it was a tour minibus. It looked yeah. like a minibus, except it wasn't a minibus. It was blacked out, and inside it was like Luxury. airline seats and a, and a PlayStation TV. Screen, TV. PlayStation, <laughs> And the lads who were driving were amazing because they were yeah. like, remember we said we were like we got escorted into the, the building in Manchester. We were like, lads, we, we don't need security. And then we arrived at Manchester and went, maybe we do need <laughs> yeah, mate, <laughs> yeah. mate, we just felt like stars oh, for five minutes. And, and do you know what? Heron Grange, the company, they, yeah, they, they, they were they great. Close security protection, but they do these amazing vans and yeah, they drove us around. Hopefully we'll be using they them again. Um, but yeah, the tour, can't wait because we had the best time. I got to tell you, what? We, we've got to talk about the tour in, in a second, but I, I do remember this. What? I, Go on. It, well, it's just reminded me about the vans. So did you know I played in um, that big ch uh, charity game, the game for Ukraine? I played in it a couple of months ago. No. Okay, so it just so happened. Was it called Game for Ukraine? Game for Ukraine. It was right. at Stamford Bridge. And it just so happened. Oh, it was it? an amazing event to, you know, uh, raise money to build schools in Ukraine because obviously it's Great. terrible what's happening yep. over there. And I was like, I can't play because I'm in Guadeloupe. We had a two-week uh, break in the middle of filming and it just so happened that if it landed in that. In fact, I turned around to Death in Paradise and went, you have to release me a day earlier. And they were like, just well, so you can play at Stamford Bridge. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, well, we can't. It's scheduled. And I was like, guys, please don't make me get on my knees and beg. You have to let them bless them. They rescheduled, so I was able to fly a day earlier. I landed, went to Stamford Bridge, and played. I played left back. The back line was me at left back, Fabio Cannavaro, Gerard Piquet, and William Gallas. You are joking. In front of me, Claude Makaleli, Clarence Seydorf, uh, Joe off. Cole, Mikhailo Mudrik on the left. Uh, Samuel Eto up front. I can't remember who was on the right. Get to Mate, full. It was that's unbelievable. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. So anyway, the story you reminded me about the about the uh, the vans is we were at the Chelsea Harbour Hotel and we're all sort of, that's where we've met and we've all had pre match meal and then we're heading to Stamford Bridge. So they bring they don't have one big coach. They have those those vans, those taxis. They were like, oh, just everyone jump in the minibuses, but they're not minibuses. They're most luxury like. <laughs> so we get in and. Whoever just walked out happened to get in at the same time. So I find myself sitting there next to Michael Essien and Gerard Piquet. And uh, Gerard Piquet's two sons, right, who were just playing, playing um, uh, FIFA against each other. And Michael Essien and Gerard Piquet are chatting, and I'm just chatting away with them. All right, lads, this is, uh, yeah, all right. And Gerard Piquet's won everything. <laughs> he was unbelievable, right? And, uh, oh, here's a really weird thing to digress. Gerard Piquet's sons got really starstruck by a couple of the lads from Ted Lasso. And I was like, you've grown up knowing Leo Messi. How are you starstruck by two pretend footballers? <laughs> this makes no sense to me. So we're in the, we're in the van and Mike Lessian is just chatting to PK and Gerard Piquet. And he's like, so, uh, oh, how, how, how's things? He said, oh, the boys, what, what language do they speak? Where do they? And PK's like, yeah, they're this old now and they're that old, you know, perfect English. And he said, well, they, we speak Catalan, but they obviously speak English. And he said, oh, where are they living now? And he said, well, they live in Miami with their, with their mother. And, uh, and, and Michael Essien's like, oh, is, is, that, is it going all right? She's like, he's like, you know what exes are like. And to be fair to him, he didn't, he didn't sort of slag her off, but there was definitely a feeling of like, <sighs> the old ball and chain, you know what the exes mm. are like. And it was just as he said that, that I remembered. He's talking about Shakira. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I was like, my, my, my life. I'm a hipster line. I've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just one of those weird. His, his ex misses is Shakira. Yeah. She could. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
She's fitter, isn't she? <laughs> She's fit. She is fit, though. Yeah. Seriously. I look at her and I just think, yeah, yeah. she is fit. She is. She just won an Emmy. You just go, even a blind man can see she's fit and her hips don't lie. So, yeah. <laughs> before, I know we're not going to use any be, of this. Before, this is just for you. Before or after. <laughs> Do you know what? If Shakira was anywhere near a I'd definitely press the button. <laughs> Well, obviously. Yeah. Well, just just in case. That's what they should call it. You could, What they should do is have Russian roulette at Amsterdam and say well, one of you, them. You take your mum. One of them is Shakira. But the one other's of them, your mum. The other's your mum. <laughs> you, you have to just take the risk. Would you take. Here we go. Oh, this is what we Okay, here yeah. Here we go. This is would you rather. Would you rather. <laughs> could you do this? Yeah. If you go to Amsterdam, right, and you go in, it's a 50 50 glory hole, right? <laughs> One of them could be one of them Shakira, but the other one's your mum, right? Wow. Do you take the risk? Would you go in and take the chance? Well, I've got a little bit of an advantage because if my mum wasn't texting me, she's still alive. <laughs> then, I, <laughs> then I know I'm safe. <laughs> Some reason one of the glory holes isn't working today. <laughs> yeah, it's just empty. <laughs> it's just, just an empty room. <laughs> well, well. So well, listen. So I'm not sure. Up. Listen, I look. I think she's so beautiful, but I'm not sure I take the risk. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we, that, so that's the thing. So anyone we shouted out and asked if we can hear your stories, stories, would you rather's, and like, what's worth it? Is it worth the risk? That can be a new section. Yeah. Is would it you, worth listen, the risk? Listen, when we did the tour, the would you rather section was hilarious yeah. because. You know, you lot are some sick people out there. And yeah. you sent us some, some great would yeah. you rather's. And we come up with our own. If you came to the tour, you'll know what it's about. And send we'll, us, your, send we'll us them in. Sick, sick send problems. us them in. We've got so new we're technology gonna, now. We're we gonna, can... Yeah, it's all, it's all kicking off. So we're going to be all over the place. Uh, games, audience interaction. Um, so basically, uh, guys, if you want to come, we'd love to have you. Go to the link in the text below this episode to find out more. It's going to be uh, from the end of March through into April. And we're basically going to do weekends. Uh, we're just going to do... Like fr Thursday, Friday, Saturdays around exactly, that sort exactly. of vibe. Yeah, yeah just fr Friday and Saturdays, I think. <laughs> well, listen, it's a great Christmas present for someone to exactly. buy. And so is the merchandise. Remember, my mum still needs a bungalow. Get involved. Yeah. Get some merch <laughs> yeah, box. Exactly. Yeah, you'll have, had, you'll have done dry January, so you're going to want to get banged on it. Exactly. By the time March rolls around, you're going to be absolutely battered. Exactly. Come, if you've seen the tour last time, it's going to be that, but more. But we so. actually have some highlights. Oh. We have some tour highlights, so, oh. so you know if anybody's watching this, then we'll, we'll put some yeah, tour Yeah, if you didn't come on now. tour and didn't have, buy a ticket, you tight yeah, bastards, yeah. have a look at these and then come and get come and see us this time. Yeah, have a look at this and then uh, and then uh, well decide if you want to come. We'd love to have you. Do you have any um, any stories about Birmingham? Um, I've, I've, I spent a bit of time in Birmingham. I, uh, I do stuff for Libby May's charity here, where I go and um, I sing. <laughs> what do you sing, Will? <laughs> I might do Mustang Sally, but I do do other songs as well. Fucking hell. Do you do Mustang Sally twice for a tenor? No, just once. Um, Big pair of scissors and a ribbon. Yeah, um, I've spent a bit of time here, mostly f in fucking traffic, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's um, I've got, um, yeah, I've been to a strip club here. Oh, yeah? Well, More strip clubs in Birmingham than anywhere else in the UK. Well, I've got, actually got some fun facts. Will's, Will's fun, fun facts. facts. Let's hear them. Well, there's um, a section of the podcast that he, usually, he enjoys probably more than anyone else. No, more. there's a few facts. Obviously, Birmingham's got more canals than Venice. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> a few canal fans like that. <laughs> We're canals! <laughs> and more dead We're bodies. We're on the map! In more dead bodies in them canals than anyone else. <laughs> um, and also, Shopping trolleys. Also, obviously... Um, Lord of the Rings, it all came from here. Wait, what? It did. I've seen so fucking loads of orcs walking around in short fucking skirts. <laughs> in it the boring. No, the writer, was it Tolkien? Is that his name? You forgot his name when you said Tolkien. Lord of the Rings, didn't you? <laughs> be honest. Is it Tolkien? Be, yeah, it's J.R. Tolkien, but I'm, be honest, you went, you went, Lord of the Rings, you know, that's well, from here. Well, he, I don't think it is. Tolkien, is he, is he Brummie? Okay, yeah, and, um, and also there's quite a few famous Brummies. There's a big metal scene here, isn't there? You know, Black Sabbath and all that. And yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's a lot of big metal fans here. And also, like you said, more strip clubs in Birmingham than any other city in the UK. I, Edinburgh is the world's number one festival destination. Well, yeah. I, I think that's pretty much well known. Well, I hate dickhead. I'm doing me fun facts. Let me it's get like Edinburgh begins with an E. It's like, I think they know this that. This is before. weird. I found this weird. Right. Right, the world's, right, one and only knighted, knighted penguin lives at Edinburgh Zoo. Is that a true? What the fuck is the knighted penguin doing at Edinburgh Zoo? Why is he knighted? 
Does anyone know why he's knighted, the penguin? Everyone's just like, no, Does anyone know? He's from Norway. He fought off the Norwegian army. <laughs> on his own? <laughs> on his Jack Jones. What is he fucking happy feet? Get to fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking kill fucking you, you bastards. They just dropped I'll him from a height. I'll fucking kill you. No, I like the fucking dancing penguin. I'm not going over there. They all thought they were tripping. Jesus, that's a good one. Have you heard of the Penny Black? Oh, the Penny Black. I've had you a told few, me about this today. I've had, I've had a few, well, not nights in the Penny Black. I've had a few mornings in the Penny have Black. You, have you been to the Penny Black? The Penny Black, we all know that's the pub that... Does, is it still the thing? But back in 2002 when I did the Fringe, it was a pub that opened at 6am for everyone who'd been out all night to just stagger into and carry on, crack on. Oh, is that it still sounds that? lovely. Or is it just a normal pub now? I hear some muttering. No one wants to admit that they're in there at 6am. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, I don't know what he's talking about. Turning around to the missus they going, I've never been there. should have a live webcam feed from there. Yeah. That, imagine it was, the science. It was it's not pretty, like, yeah. do you do roast dinners? It's not that kind of thing. <laughs> no, it's not a gastropub. Yeah, well, that was that. Episode one, season four, and yeah, glad to be back. And it's great. Great to be Are back. You, do you feel a bit pissed? I think I'm, I'm, you, I'm, getting, really? I'm getting runny air, guys. Really? Because <laughs> that's fascinating, because uh, these are alcohol-free. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Billy bullshitter. <laughs> I do, I feel a bit pissed. Yeah, this is dead strong. <laughs> I've had a side of get me to the back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Two pints, Will and Ralph. Season one. See you for the next one, guys. Episode one, sorry. Season four, episode one. Season four, episode... Is it season four already? We're back! We're back!